Hello, and thank you for joining me under these very unique circumstances. The idea that government officials have essential and extraordinary ethical obligations to the public is as old as democracy itself. As a public official, the power I wield doesn't come from merely my title or my salary or my political party. As the Declaration of Independent States, the just powers of government come exclusively from the consent of the governed. This is true for my office, and it's true for every public official in the state. Our criminal justice system, and indeed our entire republic, rests on the foundation of this basic civic transaction. In exchange for the power to govern, public officials swear an oath of loyalty to the public interest. They don't swear loyalty to their donors, their stock portfolios, their bank accounts, or even their families. So important is this sacred trust that public officials have a duty not only to obey the law, but even to avoid the appearance of impropriety. In other words, adherence to the law is an obligation, not an option. And yet it is my conclusion today that the following individuals not only violated the bare minimum standards of integrity, they corrupted the justice system and trampled upon the public trust while doing so. Today, my office is announcing charges against Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith, former Assistant Macomb County Prosecutor Benjamin Liston, Assistant Macomb County Prosecuting Attorney and Chief of Operations Derek Miller, and William Weber, owner of Weber Security Group. Our careful, impartial, and methodical investigation began with a complaint filed by Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle over a year ago and uncovered an elaborate scheme of public profiteering motivated by what appears to be unfettered self-interest. Before I delve into the specific charges, I'd like to address the timing of this announcement. Once we completed our investigation and established probable cause, we immediately decided to pursue charges. We did not consider the challenges to our justice system posed by the COVID-19 outbreak. That is the only way the law should ever be administered, blind to any form of avarice, prejudice, or extraneous obstacles, no matter the circumstances before us. I am also mindful that the allegations involve serious misconduct in office by the prosecuting attorney of the third most populous county in our state. And when we discover such evidence that leads us to believe that a law enforcer has now become a lawbreaker, that this is a person who possesses the unique and awesome authority and responsibility to charge individuals with criminal offenses, and that he has utilized the resources of his office for personal enrichment or other improper purpose, it is incumbent upon our department not to just sit back and wait until there is a more convenient time to charge. As Attorney General, my most important and serious responsibility is protecting the public trust. The reason is simple. Without public trust, government fails. Without public trust, justice stands no chance against reckless abuse of power. After this matter was referred to the Attorney General from the Michigan State Police, based on a complaint from Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle, the MSP investigated Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith's use of four forfeiture accounts. MSP's investigation revealed that Eric Smith directed spending from the drug forfeiture account, the OWI, or Operating While Intoxicated, forfeiture account, the Bad Check Restitution account, and the Warren Drug Court account for the benefit of others of his choosing and for his own personal benefit. Smith, using his support staff and in concert with former Assistant Prosecuting Attorney and Chief of Operations Ben Liston, current Assistant Prosecutor and Chief of Operations Derek Miller, thwarted other county officials' efforts to obtain oversight or custody of the forfeiture accounts. This prevented Macomb County's checks and balances on Smith's expenditures the county treasurer places on all other county accounts. Specifically, the complaint warrant today alleges that four men embezzled individually and collectively approximately $600,000 from Macomb County. Eric Smith, Macomb County prosecutor is alleged to have committed the following 10 charges. 
one count of official misconduct in office, a five-year felony, one count of tampering with evidence in a civil proceeding, aiding and abetting, a four-year felony, one count of accessory after the fact to Ben Liston's embezzlement by a public official, a five-year felony, one count of conducting a criminal enterprise, a 20-year felony, with a predicate act of embezzlement by a public official, one predicate for 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018, five counts of embezzlement by a public official, a 10-year felony, one count for each year of 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018, one count of using a computer to commit or conspire to commit a crime, a 10-year felony that may be sentenced consecutively. Benjamin Liston, former assistant Macomb County prosecutor and chief of operations, now retired, is alleged to have committing the following four charges. One count of official misconduct in office, a five-year felony. One count of conducting a criminal enterprise, a 20-year felony with a predicate of embezzlement by a public official. Two counts of embezzlement by a public official, a 10-year felony. One count each for 2016 and 2017. Derek Miller, Assistant Macomb County Prosecuting Attorney and Chief of Operations is alleged to have committed two charges. One count of official misconduct in office, a five-year felony. One count of conspiracy to commit a legal act in an illegal manner, a five-year felony. William Weber, owner of Weber Security Group, is alleged to have committed four charges. One count of forgery, a 14-year felony. One count of larceny by conversion, 20,000 or more, a 10-year felony. One count of aiding and abetting Eric Smith's embezzlement by a public official, a 10-year felony. One count of receiving and concealing stolen property, a 10-year felony. As indicated, this investigation involved the four forfeiture accounts previously listed. By statute, each of these accounts should be controlled by the county treasurer. Moreover, the purposes of these accounts varied slightly, but ultimately the funds are mandated to be utilized in such a way to further the ability of the county to fight crime and to assist those who are victims of crimes. Appropriate uses of these funds includes some of the following, restitution for crime victims, outfitting specialized witness rooms with child-sized furniture for child victims, funding diversion programs involving drug or alcohol rehabilitation for offenders, paying for prosecutor trainings by the National Association of District Attorneys, or even funding nonprofit organizations legitimately related to combating crime, such as Crime Stoppers. However, that is not how Eric Smith and his top administrators chose to use these funds. <clears throat> Instead, Smith and his cohorts elected to utilize these accounts as their own personal slush funds spent in order to enrich themselves or others, to build goodwill in the communities in which Smith would seek re-election, or for items normally paid for through campaign finance accounts. It is alleged that Smith and others spent what amounts to approximately $600,000 on a variety of items and activities that were not related to assisting law enforcement, including, but not limited to, flowers, gift cards for restaurants, skincare and cosmetics for select secretaries, a security system for Smith's personal residence with multiple cameras and equipment alarms for his sump pump, carbon monoxide detector, and a smoke detector, out-of-state moving expenses after the retirement of Ben Lister, including payment for his U-Haul rental and hitch for his personal vehicle in order for Lister to move to his retirement home in Arizona, <clears throat> tens of thousands of dollars to various Catholic churches with notes personally signed from prosecutor Eric Smith, multiple retirement parties and awards for select staff members, numerous country club events and holiday parties, iPads for children who attended school with Smith's child, pens with Smith's name and the slogan, one tough prosecutor etched on them, garden benches for staffers' homes and other items which clearly fall outside the legal purposes of the accounts from which they were drawn. We also allege that Mr. Weber provided false invoices totaling nearly $28,000 for goods or services never provided to Macomb County 
in any capacity. Beginning in 2017 and again in 2018, Plant Moran, the county's auditor, noted a material weakness in its annual audit due to Prosecutor Smith maintaining a bank account not reported in the county's ledger. We allege that considerable efforts were made by Mr. Smith, Mr. Liston, and Mr. Miller to conceal the existence of the accounts from the county treasurer. There are multiple additional facts which will be revealed during the course of the proceedings as they move forward, but as always, the criminal charges filed today are merely allegations, and the defendants are presumed innocent until and unless they are proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of the offenses described. All four of these men will have their day of court. You should know that we are now working with the defendant's attorneys to make arrangements for their clients to turn themselves in and do not expect that arrest will become necessary. We also expect that people will want to know whether Eric Smith will remain in office as Macomb County prosecutor while the charges are pending. Well, that's not something that's within the control of our office. However, you should know there are two mechanisms for removal. The first involves formal removal proceedings by the governor in which Governor Whitmer would have to serve as the finder of fact, hear the evidence presented in person, and make the decision as to whether or not removal is warranted, which honestly I believe is highly unlikely during the course of the COVID-19 state of emergency. The second mechanism involves an action by the Macomb County Board of Commissioners, currently chaired by Eric Smith's brother, Bob Smith. So with that, let me end by thanking Southfield's 46th District Court Judge Cynthia Arbant for signing the warrants this morning in lieu of the Macomb County 41B District Court Judges who have all recused themselves, and as well by thanking Tom Boyd, who is now serving as the new State Court Administrator, for assisting us in making these arrangements today. And finally, I want to commend our Public Integrity Unit and Assistant Attorneys General Mike Frezza, Robert Hayes, and Robin Frankel, as well as Solicitor General Fadwa Hamoud and Michigan State uh, Police Sergeant Chris Corvo for their commitment to this investigation. This was not an easy job as it involved many people from a number of agencies and we are grateful to everyone who participated. Our job is to ensure integrity and justice and the actions we took today are a significant step in that direction for the residents of Macomb County.